one counting problem. You have seven cookies to give to four kids. And I'm gonna represent these kids as kid A, B, C, and D. So you have seven cookies to give to four kids. How many ways can you do this? Take a moment to think about how you might solve this problem. Now, you may assume that it is acceptable to give a kid no cookies. Also, the cookies are all identical, and the order in which you give out the cookies does not matter. Before solving the problem, here is a wrong way to approach this. You might guess that the answer should be something like 4 to the 7th power. Because for each of the 7 cookies, there are 4 choices of kids to which you can give the cookie. Now, this is reasonable, but technically wrong. To see why, consider a few possible outcomes. We could assign the first six cookies to kid A. So I'm going to put six little circles above kid A. We're going to give the first six cookies to kid A and the seventh cookie to kid B. Now, another outcome would assign, so keep in mind, remember this picture, remember this image. Another outcome would be to give the first cookie to kid B and the six remaining cookies to kid A. So do you see how technically those two scenarios were different in how you gave out those cookies? Both outcomes are included in the four to the seventh answer here. So this number counts both of those different scenarios, but for our counting problem, both outcomes are really the same. Kid A gets six cookies and kid B gets one cookie. We want those to be the same thing. What do outcomes actually look like then? How can we represent them? Well, one approach would be to write an outcome as a string of four numbers like this. Let me uh, erase this real quick. Something like three, one, one, two, which represents the outcome in which the first kid gets three cookies, the second, and the third kid get one cookie and the fourth kid gets two cookies. Represented this way, the order in which the numbers occur matters. One, three, one, two, one, three, one, two is a different outcome because the first kid gets one cookie instead of three. Each number in the string can be an inte any integer between zero and seven, but the answer is not seven to the fourth power. And let me write that one down real quick. So the answer is not seven to the fourth power either. We need the sum of the numbers to be seven. Another way we might represent outcomes is to write a string of seven letters. So instead we might do something like A, B, A, A, D, C, D, which represents that the first cookie goes to kid A, the second cookie goes to kid B, the third and fourth cookies go to kid A, and so on. In fact, this outcome is identical to the previous one. A gets three cookies, B and C get one, and D gets two cookies. Each of the seven letters in the string can be any of the four possible letters, one for each kid, but the number of such strings is not four to the seventh power because here order does not matter. In fact, another way to write the same outcome is A, 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 B, C, and D, D. This will be the preferred representation of the outcome. Since we can write the letters in any order, we might as well write them in alphabetical order for the purposes of counting. So we will write all the A's first, then all the B's, and so on. So we don't, we're not going to like this representation here. We're going to, um, and that's not the answer. I should have crossed that out. 
this is the preferred representation of how we distribute cookies. Now think about how you could specify such an outcome. All we really need to do is say when to switch from one letter to the next. In terms of cookies, we need to say after how many cookies do we stop giving cookies to the first kid and start giving cookies to the second kid. And then after how many do we switch to the third kid? And after how many do we switch to the fourth? So yet another way to represent an outcome is something like this. Now I'm going to write this one in blue. So this outcome is going to be star 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 bar star bar star bar star star. Do you see how these two, technically all three, are the same? Three cookies go to the first kid. So that's this group right here. Then we switch and give one cookie to the second kid. So this bar right here represents that we're switching to the next kid. And then we give one cookie to the second kid. Then switch. And then give one cookie to the third kid. And then switch. And two cookies to the last kid. So notice that we need seven stars and three bars. I'm going to erase this, these former representations. And now this is where stars and bars comes in. Let me erase this. Okay. So we, we need seven stars and three bars, one star for each cookie and one bar for each switch between kids. So one fewer bars than there are kids um, in this case. So four kids, three bars, one fewer. We don't need to switch after the last kid because we're done. Now, why have we done all of this? It's simple. To count the number of ways to distribute seven cookies to four kids, all we need to do is count how many stars and bars charts there are. But a stars and bars chart is just a string of symbols, some stars and some bars. If instead of stars and bars, we would use zeros and ones, it would just be a bit string. And we know how to count those. Before we get too excited, though, we should make sure that we that really any string of, in our case, seven stars and three bars actually corresponds to a different way to distribute cookies to kids. In particular, consider a string like this. Bar bar. Star star star. Bar. Star 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 star. So that's another string of stars and bars. Does that correspond to a cookie distribution? Yes, it represents the distribution in which kid A gets zero cookies because we switch right to kid B, and then kid B gets zero cookies because we switch to kid C, and then kid C gets three cookies, and then we switch to kid D, and then there are four cookies that kid D gets. So no matter how the stars and bars are arranged, we can distribute cookies in that way. Also, given any way to distribute cookies, we can represent that with a stars and bars chart. For example, and let me erase this real quick, all of this. For example, the distribution in which kid A gets six cookies, and kid B gets one cookie, and kid C and kid D get zero cookies, has the following chart. It would be represented as star, 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 star. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking a new language. Six stars, and then we switch to kid B, star, switch to kid C, switch to kid D. After 
all that work, we are finally ready to count. Each way to distribute cookies corresponds to a stars and bars chart with seven stars and three bars. So there are 10 symbols, and we must choose three of them to be bars. Thus, 10 choose three ways to distribute seven cookies to four kids. Now, that was pretty complex, but the whole point of this is we need to reframe the problem into something that we can count, and we know how to count this. In this case, when we represent 10 objects, in which three of them have to be bars and seven of them have to be stars, we know how to count those. It's 10 choose 3, which, by the way, you could have also picked 10 choose 7. It's the same number. In this case, instead of choosing the, where the bars go, we're choosing where the stars go. But once we choose where the stars go, it's kind of obvious as to where the bars go, since there are 10 total positions and only seven stars and three bars. In the next video, we will discuss in more detail what exactly it is here that we are doing, and we'll do more examples. I'll see you then.